In this video, we are walking through the inflammatory mediators or the chemicals that are involved in the inflammatory process. This is a big topic you'll have to know about for your nursing fundamentals class. And then also it'll pop back up as you go through nursing school. So we're gonna walk through it in this video here. This is actually a tutor call that I did inside our nursing SOS membership community, but I thought it would be helpful here to post on YouTube. So I hope you love it. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell and let's dive in. All right, so I got a fantastic question for our live tutor call inside the Nursing SOS membership community all about inflammation and what chemicals are involved during the inflammatory process, what happens during inflammation. So I thought this was a fantastic question that a lot of students have, especially if you're in nursing fundamentals. So I wanted to uh, create a whole kind of flow for you here and walk through the chemicals that are uh, involved in this inflammatory process. These are the main ones that you're gonna wanna know for your nursing school exams. So the first thing that happens during this process is the immune cells, things like mast cells or basophils, the macrophages, those uh, really those immune cells in the body, they're gonna really release what we call inflammatory mediators. Now those are just things that um, are going to go and cause changes in the body tissues, in the blood vessels, vessels and in the blood to uh, increase inflammation and help ultimately try to help the body to heal. So that's what these inflammatory mediators are doing. Now we're going to walk through them, but when you hear the term inflammatory mediators, don't worry about it. It's kind of a big phrase or a big word, um, but it really, that's what it means is that these little uh, kind of chemical-y type things are going to go into the body tissues and uh, really just cause those changes to happen that are going to help the body to heal. So one of these inflammatory mediators is called histamine. Now you might have heard of histamine already. Now histamine uh, is triggered by things like mast cells and basophils. Um, it, those cells release histamine when there is a tissue injury or when there's an allergic reaction happening. That's, and histamine is going to go into the tissues. It's going to cause vasodilation in the blood vessels, and it's gonna make the blood vessels become what we call leaky, so-called capillary leak. It's gonna make those blood vessels leaky, which means that fluid's gonna be kind of uh, moving out of the blood vessel just a little bit um, into the surrounding tissues. So those blood vessels are going to dilate, they're gonna get larger, and they're the, what we call the, um, the cell walls of those blood vessels are gonna be more permeable. So it's gonna cause capillary leak where the, the kind of fluid from the blood vessel is gonna move out into the tissues. Now, this is gonna help increase blood flow to that area. Now, same thing with bradykinin and leukotrienes and cytokines. Also, those uh, inflammatory mediators, those chemical mediators are going to cause vasodilation. So really the ultimate goal here for these is to get more blood flow and more of those white blood cells and all the good nutrients and stuff to that area of the body that is uh, has that injury. It's going to lead to inflammation to increase blood flow and to help that area heal help all that tissue to heal. Now, another thing that will happen is prostaglandins. Prostaglandins come in, those cause more capillary leak, so more fluid is going out into the tissues to help get all those good white blood cells and all those um, yummy nutrients and everything uh, to help um, uh, heal that tissue that's damaged. You're going to get more white blood cells there, more um, even like antibodies and stuff. If there's any bacteria or anything in there, they're all going to attack that area and try to fight off whatever pathogens are there or what whatever's going on, whether it's a tissue injury or um, a possible infection. And now this leads to swelling. This leads to heat. This leads to redness and pain in those in, in that area or in those areas that are inflamed because all that blood flow is going there to that area. It leads to swelling because there's increased blood flow and blood really itself is warm, right? Blood keeps your body warm. So it's gonna cause more heat in that area, more redness and also pain in that area. There are other chemicals that can cause an increase in pain in that area. Kind of tells your brain, hey, there's something going on here that you need to be 
aware of, right? You need to know that this area of your body is hurt so that you can uh, try to help it in other ways as well. So that's why pain is going to be um, uh, caused there. You've got that increase in blood flow. And then there's some chemicals there that's also going to cause pain to tell your brain, hey, I'm hurt and I need help. Now, a big critical thinking point that I really want to walk through here is that with more blood going to that area, the place that's injured, it's going to cause swelling, heat, redness, and pain. It's because that blood flow is going to that area. So anytime we're looking at something like nursing fundamentals or a topic like this or any med surge disorder or something, you want to be thinking in the back of your mind, like, hey, why is this happening? And so these things, swelling, heat, redness, and pain is happening with this inflammation because of that extra blood flow going to that area. So when you are taking your nursing school exams, you don't want to just memorize a list of these are the things that are going to happen when the body is inflamed or um, there's an area in the tissues that's that has some inflammation. You don't want to just memorize that list of swelling, heat, redness, and pain. You want to actually be thinking about and critically thinking through, uh, hey, why is this actually happening? And it's happening here because of that increased blood flow. You've got all of those chemical mediators there, uh, inflammatory mediators going to the area, releasing all of their ooey juicy uh chemicals that are helping to do all these things. So that is the point there. Now, another thing that I didn't write down here, but that is super important for you to know, is that there is a big difference between inflammation and an infection. So inflammation is this process here where there might be an injury to the tissues or there might be a there might be an infection like there's a bacteria or a fungi or a pathogen or a virus or whatever that is uh, that the body is trying to fight off. So those white blood cells will go to the area and try to fight off whatever pathogen is in there. So that would be an actual infection. But inflammation can happen during an infection where there is a pathogen, but it can also happen when there's just tissue injury. So say you have a burn or a cut on your finger, like you got a paper cut or something. Like we all know that paper cuts are a real bummer, right? They're so small, but they still cause, they can cause a lot of pain, redness, and swelling just in that area, just because your tissue, like the, your, your skin is actually sliced through by a piece of paper. It's crazy. So that is what happens. Uh, inflammation can happen, whether it's a, a tissue injury, where there's no pathogen, uh, there, so it's not an infection, or inflammation can also happen with an infection. So this is the process for uh, inflammation specifically, but if there is an infection, then that's a whole other level where there's um, more white blood cells and all that stuff to go and attack that pathogen. So I hope this walkthrough was helpful for you uh, to kind of break down uh, the these uh, inflammatory mediators and the cells that are involved with inflammation when inflammation happens in the body. Now, if you need help with passing your nursing fundamentals exams, be sure to check out this video here where I walk you through my top study tips to help you pass. And if you like this video, hit that like button and write love in the comments below because that is what we do here on my channel. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll see you over there in that next video.